what is the proof of Lagrange's theorem in group theory say what really happened in that proof this is what we want to discuss in this video before I, I share my screen let me ask you a question suppose x is a finite set okay I write it as a disjoint union of a1 a2 a k okay where a1 a2 a k are subsets of x okay to find the number of elements in x what can I do I can add number of elements in a1 plus number of elements in a2 etc plus number of elements in a k that's it is that right that's what we want to do okay so what in a group suppose I have a group G need not be finite even if H is a subgroup okay then the crucial thing I observe two things the Lagrange's theorem depends on only these two observations first observation is <coughs> I can I have the notion of cosets let's say left coset AH BH etc right maybe I should share because many of you only want to see rather than hear right so let us just share yeah so suppose G is a group H is a subgroup okay need not be finite at present then I have the notion of left cosets I hope this is called left coset okay this is set of all elements AH H and H right so the first thing we observe is given any two left coset AH and BH we know either they are uh, they are disjoint or identical what does it mean all of you will repeat it but let's try to understand if I want to say there is an X in AH intersection BH okay if and only if AH equal to BH that's what it says right so let's not worry about the proof for the time being as I said the idea of my shots is to give an idea the second thing is this is the first observation and second observation is that all AH okay there is a bijection with H for any A in H right therefore the first one says G is written as a design suppose G is finite now let's assume finite but this what I am saying is true even for anything a H a design union that is okay you look at all a, a left cosets A varies over G okay remember this is a set okay therefore A H may be equal to a, a dash H but they are all identified single element therefore in each of them you just select only one representative okay you understand that therefore G I write distinct representative A1 H to maybe H as A0 and A2 H and so on A D A M H AM minus 1 or MH okay let us assume let's not worry about that okay but my, my A1 could also be e. so I write G as a disjoint union suppose G is finite therefore number of elements in G is same as saying number of elements in AH okay where this this runs this sum over runs over distinct coset distinct cosets right but what I know is so there are, let's assume there are there exist m distinct cosets therefore my mod g is going to be mod h and how many sums are there this m therefore this m times mod h where mod h stands for number of elements in h okay so that's it so we have proved the order of G order of H divides the order of G okay so you can see so as I said the proof depends only on two things I can write a group G as a G join union of its cosets if G is finite then this union is finite union 
and the second observation is each quasar has exactly the same number of elements as the number of elements h if h is a finite thing otherwise there is a bijection so that's it okay from that the proof follows now with this idea go through the proof of lagrange's theorem try to see so i am skipping the proof why ah intersection bh if s it's not empty then ah equal to bh these are all very small things if you want i can do it but that's not purpose of my shots this is just to give you an a view point of how to synthesize review your proof okay i hope you enjoy it we will meet again